Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell project tutorial series. So this is actually a project that we've kind of mentioned a few times on this channel. It, we are going to be building a file integrity monitor or a file monitor. Now this can actually be designed a few different ways. Uh, we're going to be actually starting this video today. We're going to be doing a very basic version of it. And then as the videos progress, we're going to be adding features to it, eventually adding a GUI to it as well. So this way you can actually share the application to maybe other people in your department or other people in other departments that need to make sure that certain files are never changed. And we can just be sure that we can give them a GUI, very easy to use. They don't actually have to manipulate a PowerShell script, which comes in handy as well. But you can also use this as a as a checker for different files. So you can have like a script repository on a main server and it checks specific locations on a bunch of other servers to make sure that the script hash matches the script on the main server. If they are different, maybe to recopy that script over to those remote servers, just to make sure that that server has an up-to-date version of the script. Maybe on the main server, there is a newer version. Of course, you could do that comparison through last write times or created times instead of the hash, but those are things that you can definitely do with a file integrity monitor or a file monitor. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get started with the absolute basic version of our file monitor. But before we do that, uh, we're just gonna actually go over a few things that we wanna do with our file monitoring script. Um, so at first, it's just going to be a script. We aren't doing any GUIs till probably a few, a uh, few videos in. So let's first describe what we really want uh, to have our script do. So we want to have at least like a list of different files that we want to monitor. So we want to monitor uh, multiple files. Um, so we're going to need, uh, need a uh, file with a list of file to check. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is the ability to kind of goes hand in hand with that, but we want to be able to add files fairly easily, be able to add files to monitor quite easily. And of course, we want to make sure, make sure the file still exists because um, we can't check a hash if the file isn't there. So maybe that'll be a different scenario where we're going to be checking our list of files that we want to make sure that are still good, but we also have to make sure that that file even still exists. If it doesn't exist, raise some sort of flag to say this file isn't found. Maybe that will have a different procedure as far as like policies in the back end of what to do in that case. Maybe go check the backups um, or anything like that. So I think that that will be pretty good. And then uh, some nice to have features for now. Uh, will be an email alert. So we probably won't configure the email alert in this video today, uh, but we're going to definitely be able to monitor multiple files. We're going to be able to add files pretty easily. Um, and we're going to make sure that the file still exists. Uh, we're going to have an email alert. And we're going to add to this file as we are going on. Um, so I want to show you guys also a little bit of a process of just like, not really software engineering, but just kind of building what you first need. So it's called an MVP, a most viable product. Um, so as long as you have a viable product that will do the job, you can always add features to it lately uh, or later, sorry. And then you can always add features that'll make, make it better, add features that people want because maybe someone will be like, oh, I want the file integrity monitor to do this, um, or I want it to have a GUI. Like a GUI is already something that we're gonna, we know that we want, so it's gonna be a nice to have feature is we want a GUI uh, to easily add files. Uh, and then maybe we're also going to want a schedule uh, to run. Uh, so that's not really something we're gonna be scripting, uh, but it is something that someone would have to configure on a server. Maybe we can write a script to put something into the task scheduler. But let's go ahead and let's start with these here. So 
We want to monitor multiple files and we want to be able to add files to that list quite easily. And we want to make sure that the file still exists. So let's go into our Visual Studio code here and let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to have a file where we're going to be storing all of our file paths and our hashes for those files. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new file here and I'm going to call this baselines.csv. And in here, we're going to do a uh, path, comma, hash. That's all we're going to need for now anyways. Um, so the first value is going to be path. The second value is going to be hash. And make sure you put an enter in here. That is really important for this video. Uh, make sure that you do have a new line. Um, this will, would be fixable later if you don't have that new line. Uh, but we're just going to want to make sure that we have that new line there. And let's go back to our script. Now we already know where we're going to be storing our file paths and our hashes and where we're going to be reading them from. It's going to be from this baselines.csv. So let's go ahead and let's put that into our script here. So let's do a baseline file path. And we are going to make that equal to our file path here. So let's just copy that, paste that in here. And now we want to add our first file that we're going to be monitoring and add it to this file. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a folder here. I'm just going to name it files and we're going to put a file in here. We're going to name it test.txt and we're just going to put the values of one, two, three, four in here. And what we're going to do just to make sure that it actually does work properly, that we're actually able to add files to this. Let's test it out. So we're not going to be creating a function just yet. This is going to be really the bare bones, kind of like a little bit of a wireframe, but past the wireframing aspect, just like a proof of concept that this can actually work. And then we're going to actually, in the future videos, we're going to add functions to this. We're going to add the GUI. We're going to add emails. We're going to add a whole bunch of functionality to this file integrity monitor step by step. This is very similar to a process that I would use in real life. I want to make these videos kind of a tutorial on breaking down a problem, building out the solution. Uh, so that's why these videos might feel a little bit longer um, than the other ones. But I just want to make sure that the, the all the learning aspects and the breakdown of a project gets shown here. So what we're going to first do is let's go ahead and let's grab the file path for this test.txt file. So let's do a file to uh, monitor path. And let's go ahead and let's copy the path here for that as well. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to do the hash for this file. So we're going to do a variable called hash and we are going to do a get file hash on the path file to monitor path. Now in here we've already seen this commandlet in one of our quick tips here. You can specify an algorithm um, but we're just going to leave it at the default which is uh, SHA-256. That should be good for us. And now that we have our hash what we want to do is we want to be able to store the path and the hash into this CSV file here. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this actually right now is going to be to create a string here. And we are going to put a variable wrapper. And we are going to do a file to monitor path is going to be the path of our file. And then we're going to put a comma here and another variable wrapper. And we're going to put the hash dot hash here. And what this is going to do, so if we actually just run this, we're going to see at the output here, we actually get our file path and we get our long string, which is our hash. So that is actually perfect. So what we want to do is we want to output this line into our CSV file. Now, the easiest way to do that right now is to use our pipe command. And we're going to do an out dash file. We're going to do a file path. And we're going to point to our baseline file path. 
and we want to make sure that we do a dash append and this is always going to add that to the end of the file if we actually run this here and we go into our baseline dot csv we actually have our file and our hash now so actually, if we add a new file in our files folder, we do a test1.txt. We go in our script here. We add that in here. And if we go in our baseline, there it is. We have our two files and our two hashes. So that is actually perfect. So we are ready to actually use those. We are ready with our baseline files. So now we are ready to actually code our verification portion so we know that this will be used to add a file so what i would do here is i would just add a comment here add a file to the baseline csv and then what we're going to want to do is create add another comment and this is going to be monitor the file all right, so what we're going to want to do here is we are going to want to do a baseline files and we're going to make that equal to import-csv and our path is going to be our baseline, our baseline file path. Now we don't need to put a delimiter here since we're using a comma delimiter, but I like to put it just in case. So once we actually have that in here, so if we run this, we will see that we will actually get all of our info that is in our file here. We have our two file paths and we have our two hashes that we wanna make sure are the same. So now we're gonna do a for each file in baseline files. Oops, and let me just actually fix that here. And then open and close in curly bracket. Now what we want to do is we want to first make sure that the file path still exists. So let's do a if test path. And the path that we want to test is actually going to be file.path. And the reason why I know that here, so let's actually just cut this out here. If we actually just run this here and we do a file, we will have a dot. So we have our dot path and dot hash. And this comes from, of course, our CSV file or our baseline files object, which has two properties with the name path and hash. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an if test path. And the path that we're going to be testing is file.path. So we are testing the file path. So this will be if it succeeds. And then we'll have an else here if it fails. So let's go ahead, if it fails, let's do a write output currently. And we're gonna say, we're gonna have a variable wrapper here. We're just gonna have file.path is not found, exclamation mark. So right now, if I run this here, we should get zero output because the files are found, both of them are there. But let's go ahead and let's just delete the test1.txt here. There it is. All right, so there it is. We already got our first output here, which is telling us that it is not found. So we know that this scenario does work. We actually have our scenario where the file was deleted. It's already telling us it can't be found. It can't be matched. So we've already taken care of that scenario. So now, if the file is found, we need to compare that hash. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a variable called current hash. We're going to make that equal to get file hash on the path of file dot path, because we know that the path exists. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do an if, if the current hash is equal to file dot hash, so if the hashes if the hashes match, they are the same. Else they are not the same. So let's go ahead and let's if they are not the same, we're going to do our right output here. And we are going to do again a variable wrapper here. We're going to put file.path hash is different. Something has changed. 
And then if they are identical here, I'm just going to copy paste this right output. And we are going to say is still the same. So we got our file path is still the same. So now if we actually go ahead and we run this here, we can see here that the test.txt hash is something different. Something has changed. Um, so we can see here that it is one, two, three, four. Now let's see if we actually just uh, empty this baseline file here. And let's re-put that test file here now that we've actually saved it. And now let's go ahead and let's monitor it. And it is should still be the exact same here. So we do have an issue right off the bat because it is detecting as it is different here. So it is 03AC and the current hash is, oh, and we here is our mistake here. It will always be different because we need to do the current hash dot hash here so make sure that that is actually there so now if we run the monitoring we will see that the text file is still the same and now if we go ahead and we actually change it here we add the five and we go ahead and we run the monitoring portion we will see that something has changed and if we change it back here to the four run that again we can see that it is still exactly the same. We can add another file here. If we do test1.txt, again, just put that as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, let's add that file. And then let's go ahead and let's monitor the files again. So now we see that both files are the exact same. If we go ahead and just change number 1 and run the monitoring again we can see that the test one has changed and also if we go ahead and just delete test.txt and run that monitoring again we can see that the test is not found and the other file has changed so everything is working very very well in the first version of our file integrity monitor so in the next video what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be going ahead and creating these functions to really more easily add files. Now, you guys might have already noticed something as well, is right now I'm not doing any checks to see if the file the, pe the person wants to add actually exists. Right now, because you're typing it in manually, this could actually equivalent to an error. If I go ahead and put test2.txt, um, this will actually give us an error and this will actually kind of mess up our baselines file as well. So we're going to have to add some more error checking in the next video when we're creating the function to add something to our file. Now these are all things that you eventually kind of detect as you're building the application out. You're going to see that some other error checks that you might have to do might come up that you didn't think about in the original uh, version of your script. And even when we do the GUIs, we're going to have some more things to, to figure out as well. Uh, but in the GUI, when you would add a file, you would technically provide some sort of file explorer, which would really reduce the ability to make a mistake if a file exists or not, because they have to select it. Uh, so it takes out the typing, which is really nice about the GUI aspects. It really makes scripts sometimes a very dummy proof that way, or just error proof uh, would probably be the better term to use uh, so be sure to stay tuned for that if you guys want to see a feature get put into this script here please let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see something powershell related or uh, programming or server management related please let me know in the comments section as well be sure to hit that subscribe button hit that like button also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and i will see you guys on the next video mm -hmm.